Today I'll be talking about episodes 17 through 20 of Legend of Junhuan. The royal family is at a holiday banquet, and Junhuan goes out to get some air. They have banquets for literally everything. She's looking at some flowers when Guo Wang finds her. I won't get into too much detail, but they are perfectly matched in wit and humor. They talk love, and Guo Wang says he only plans to marry once. We see Duan Fei, the sickly consort, cursing Hua Fei for forcing her to drink the poison that ruined her health. It's pretty funny exposition, actually. I would still be healthy if it weren't for you, Hua Fei, forcing me to drink that poison seven years ago on a Sunday. And why did you do it? I'll reminisce on that next week. Wen Yi is still sick. In fact, over the last few weeks, her condition has gotten much worse. They investigate her food and find that someone's been messing with her porridge by adding too much cassava, which is poisonous, apparently. Hua Fei says this must have been a murder attempt, since the kitchen would never have been so silly. After checking with the kitchen, they find that the only palace that's picked up any cassava powder lately is Jun Huan's. Huan Bi was meant to use it to make some snacks, but darn, she can't seem to find the leftover powder. Then some random servants show up and say they saw Jun Huan on the night of the holiday banquet sneaking around Hua Fei's palace, where Wen Yi's food is prepared. Jun Huan has no alibi, since the only person that saw her that night was Guo Wang, and bringing him up would cause more problems than it would solve. Hua Fei and Chao Gui Ren start hamming it up. Chao Gui Ren's all, oh my poor baby, and Hua Fei's all, oh my god, Chao Gui Ren's poor baby. It looks like the emperor will have no choice but to take their word for it until Duan Fei shows up and says she was with Jun Huan that night. She claims she asked Jun Huan to keep it quiet because her doctors have told her to stay indoors. The emperor is happy to take any excuse to exonerate Jun Huan, especially since the witnesses fall over themselves trying to go back on their stories. When they talk in private, Duan Fei says that she saw her that night and knows that she didn't do it. Also, having been in the palace so long, she knows a scheme when she sees one. The emperor summons Chao Gui Ren in for a chat that night, and after hinting that he knows what happened and letting her scorn for a while, he tells her that she should take Wen Yi home. As always, the emperor isn't a complete idiot, but in some ways his hands are tied. Jun Huan gets home and asks Huan Bi to bring out the snacks she was meant to make with the cassava powder. Huan Bi says she threw them out, and she couldn't look more guilty if she was trying. When the emperor shows up for breakfast the next morning, Huan Bi dolls herself up, only to embarrass herself with what is, apparently, a very tacky outfit. The emperor embarrasses her on purpose because he can see how disrespectful she's being to Jun Huan. He's pretty much telling Jun Huan, don't let your servants mistreat you. Do I like the emperor? I don't know, I kind of like the emperor. Gu Long finds Huan Bi crying and comforts her a bit. Shouldn't have done that, that's all it takes for her to set her sights on him. Once she's alone, Jun Huan decides she needs to confirm once and for all if Huan Bi has betrayed her. Honestly, that cassava thing could not have been more obvious, but I get it, you want to be sure. The next time Chao Gui Ren comes to visit Jun Huan, Jun Huan gives her some presents, including a scented powder. She waits a few days and then arranges to sneak in and see Mei Zhong, who is still on house arrest. She plans to disguise herself as a maid delivering something to Mei Zhong. She leaves, making sure that Huan Bi is fully apprised of the plan. When she arrives, however, instead of entering Mei Zhuang's palace, she goes to see Jing Pin, the consort that lives next door to her. Jing Pin is a nice woman, no kids and not very loved, but she's got a level head and she's very close to Mei Zhuang as they've been neighbors for years. In fact, she saved her from a poisoning attempt once. Before they can chat for long, Hua Fei shows up. She says that she heard that Jun Huan snuck in to see Mei Zhuang, and after she spots Jun Huan's servants, she's all the more convinced. She starts to make a scene when the guards won't let her in since no one is supposed to enter Mei Zhuang's palace. News gets to the emperor and he shows up to see what's happening. Just as Hua Fei is telling him that Jun Huan is in Mei Zhuang's palace, in another one of my favorite scenes, Jun Huan shows up looking completely innocent. She is a solid alibi in Jing Pin, and Hua Fei is now in trouble for making such a scene without even getting the Empress's permission. He sends her home to reflect on her actions, and Jing Pin takes the opportunity to ask the Emperor to remove some of the guards around Mei Zhuang's room. He agrees before saying goodnight to Jun Huan. I may be reaching, but I feel like the Emperor secretly wants her to go and see Mei Zhuang. After last week's episodes, I got to thinking about how the Emperor could fall for such a stupid plan, and I think it's more like when a plan is well put together enough to be plausible, it would look really bad if he took the accused person's side anyway. 
Rumors could get out that he was blinded by love or lust, so he just kind of goes along with it. With few regards, Jun Huan is actually able to sneak in and finally see Mei Zhong. This is one of the few times a scheme goes exactly according to plan. Just perfect. She finds that Mei Zhuang isn't all that bothered with Hua Fei, but is sorely disappointed in the Emperor because she actually fell in love with him and thought he would trust her. Rookie mistake. With the visit over, Chen Huan is sneaking home when she's almost caught by some guards. She takes refuge in a random boat where Guo Wang just happens to be taking a nap. When the guards come to investigate the noise, he covers for her, telling the guards that he didn't see anyone. He rows her home, and as they chat, he accidentally drops his satchel. Jen Huan opens it to find her paper cutout from the winter night when she first talked to the emperor. She returns it without saying anything, but asks him to be more careful with it. When she returns home, she's greeted by a nervous Huan Bi. When Huan Bi tries to deny that she told anyone she was going to see Mei Zhong, Jun Huan lets her know that she smells of perfume, the same unique scent of the perfume powder she gave to Chao Guiren. They finally have an honest conversation and Jun Huan expresses her disappointment. Turns out that Jun Huan was going to have her adopted as a goddaughter and was even planning to arrange a very advantageous marriage. Huan Bi admits that she did all this because she was jealous and begs for forgiveness. Jun Huan grants it and I respect that but forgiveness would not be my decision. Huan Bi seems more like the sorry I got caught type. I don't think she's actually sorry. General Nian Gong Yao, Hua Fei's brother, returns to the capital after a string of victories. I guess big heads run in the family because Nian Gong Yao is just as cocky as his sister, doing a bunch of small, disrespectful things and then pretending he's simply unfamiliar with the palace rules. The emperor doesn't confront him, but everyone can see that what he's doing is deliberate. Rule of thumb. When Hua Fei thinks you're doing too much, you're doing too much. To be fair, Hua Fei understands that everything depends on what the emperor thinks of you. Seems like Nian Gong Yao didn't get the memo and thinks his military achievements make him untouchable. On their way out, Hua Fei tells him to be more careful, but then contradicts herself by telling him that Jun Huan has been bullying her and he should do something about it. It's clear that until now, Hua Fei saw Jun Huan as a nuisance, but now she sees her as a threat. So let's talk about that failed Wen Yi plot. Putting aside the craziness of poisoning a baby to get someone in trouble, something that always strikes me about these plots is the use of servants. Imagine being a servant asked to lie about a consort's whereabouts. If you're lucky, you're bribed, but most likely you're just threatened. Remember how easily Hua Fei got away with killing that maid in episode 3? That could be you. Then, after getting up and lying with a flimsy story that was not properly rehearsed, you'll probably be found out and then punished for trying to frame a concubine. The servants in Jun Huan's case got 80 slaps, but that could just as easily have been death. Meanwhile, the actual culprit will of course get away scot-free. I know that servant life sucks isn't exactly a hot take, but wow does servant life suck. Not that that makes me want to forgive Huan Bi for anything. Also, the introduction of Hua Fei's brother is a great way to show that as seemingly reckless as Hua Fei is, she knows not to take it too far. We're so used to seeing people tiptoe around the emperor that the seemingly little slights seem like slaps in the face. I was on the edge of my seat that whole lunch scene. We're slowly but surely starting to peel away at the mystery that is Hua Fei. What made her such a bitter bitch? We'll find out soon. It's cool that there is such a rich history for all the characters. They have their own motivations and regrets and origins. Their lives didn't just start when the main character showed up. Take Mei Zhuang for example. If she ends up as some forgotten concubine, Younger girls that come in would just hear that she was a foolish woman that tried to fake a pregnancy. She might be used as a warning tale and no one would actually know her story. Another example is Duan Fei who has a pretty tragic backstory. Lastly, although they've been hinting at it since the start of this drama, this was the point at which I knew for certain that Jun Huan and Guo Wang would be banging at some point. And I'm all for it. Till next time, thanks for watching.